Hello everyone and welcome back to uh, <clears throat> Upper Room Last Days Ministries Sunday School. Uh, it's always a pleasure to have you join us, whether it be uh, on live stream or whether it be uh, on the recorded uh, programs that uh, are broadcast over the uh, White Rose Network or to all the nations. The past couple of weeks we have been going over the sin definition of it, what they are, what causes them, and we did the seven deadly sins. And the seven deadly sins are the basics. They are not spelled out in any particular book of the Bible, but more are defined in many parts of the Bible. So today, we uh, last uh, last time we were here, we covered what the seven seven deadly sins are, and today we are going to uh, cover now what the Bible itself in particular has to say about the seven deadly sins. In the first reading today is going to be in Proverbs chapter 6, verses 16 through 19. And it says, These six things that the Lord hate, Yea, seven are an abomination to him, a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, and a heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift into running to mischief, a fault was, false witness that speaks lies, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. And in verse 20 it said, My son, keep thy father's commandments, and forsake not the law of thy mother. These are the seven deadly sins that the Bible has spelled out in one particular chapter and a couple of verses over here. And you can see if you put the other sins that we had tied together, the quote, original seven deadly sins, you can see where they each bear reverence to one another. And uh, the, probably the one that gets us into most trouble in our normal everyday walk is a proud look or pride. We can become so puffed up with ourselves and our accomplishments and our possessions that we don't truly realize that all of these things are a gift from God. We don't own anything. It's a gift from God. We don't have talents that are ours. They're a gift from God. Um, all of the riches that we have are a gift from God. All of the blessings we have are a gift from God. And it is nothing that we ourselves can accomplish and let God, unless God allows us to. And I see so many people um, that you talk to every day um, seem like every conversation you have starts with I. I did this, or I have that, or I'm going to do this, or I'm going there. Um, the other night, ran across a uh, fellow that I used to work with. And 
one of the things that almost immediately came to, upon us was, well, I'm going to Florida tomorrow. And I live in a X number of thousand dollar house. And I. And it was just a reaffirmation that everything that we have is truly not ours, but it's God's. And while I'm happy for this individual, he really does not give God any of the credit that God so richly deserves for blessing him with all of these things. The next sin that we can get into a heap of trouble over is a lying tongue. It is a, <clears throat> a case of where you just do not want to share the truth with somebody. You can take many forms. But most of the time when you are doing something that you are not, that you know is not pleasing to God, let's put it that way, and somebody questions you about it, you tend to have a tendency to lie about it. Very few people <clears throat> that I know of that will, yep, you caught me red-handed, I did it type thing over here. And it's, it's displeasing to God. Um, the case has been made <clears throat> for people that say, okay, what happens if somebody asks you a question? And the answer is going to make them feel bad or it's going to run the risk of losing the friendship what do you do in that case? And that case over there is just a lie is a lie. It is sometimes it's unpleasant that when somebody asks you your opinion, you have to give them a negative response, but it's the truth. And people deserve the truth. They may not want to hear it, but they deserve the truth. <clears throat> Um, I guess as you get older, you realize that sometimes would you rather spare somebody's feelings and have them know what the truth is? Because it's spoken right in the Bible that the truth will set you free. And <clears throat> if somebody's doing something that's wrong or something that is displeasing or maybe it's something that they're doing that um, makes them feel good but it's not true and they ask you about it they are liable to take homage to the fact that you told them the truth no that dress on you looks terrible or no you don't look good with green hair or whatever the case may be they may take offense to what you say but you have to remember that whenever you deliver a message like that, you deliver it out of love. You deliver it just speaking the truth that God gave you. And you know what? <clears throat> Nine times out of ten, after a while, the people will realize that you did not speak the truth to be hurtful or spiteful, but rather than to, a lot of times, spare them more criticism and more grief because you were willing to step up and say, this is how it is. Many years ago, I would have found that to be extremely difficult to do. But the older I get, and the stronger that I get in my walk with God, I realize it's the only way. 
that we can that we have to be upfront with people. The next one is one that should go without a lot of controversy. And that's hands that shed innocent blood. It seems like every day that you turn the TV on or you pick up a newspaper or you're listening to the radio, we see another senseless act of violence being perpetrated against innocent people. And a lot of times I have really gotten to the point where I blame the media themselves as much as the person that's doing it because they give these people their 15 minutes of fame which is what a lot of them are looking for. It's one thing to report the news, but it's another thing to go on and on and on and on and on and on and on about it. Um, I think maybe Dave has a personal, I don't want to say grudge, but a personal dislike for a lot of the stuff that the media does because I feel that it, instead of accenting God in a positive way, they kind of cast negative light on the things that God does. <clears throat> um, I watched a case the other day where um, one of the people that was killed out there in uh, Illinois a uh, disgruntled employee uh, went in and shot I forget, five or six people, killed them, at his place of work. And they made it seem like, well, the guy, he, you know, he really didn't know what he was doing. He was, you know, the man was a convicted felon. This is not the first time he has committed violence against other people. The downside to it is they're making excuses for it. And then they had what I consider the utmost in poor taste when they went in there and interviewed the wife of one of the people that was shot. And they asked, well, how do you feel about this? I wonder what they do if the person jumped up and said, boy, it's the best day of my life. I can't be happier. Because it would take them right out of their comfort zone. It is this ridiculous statement, and it is more things that just get heaped upon people on their everyday lives, and it just neutralizes our sensitivity to this. At some point in time, they're going to add an eighth sin, and that's apathy. Because that can be just as bad as all of the other seven sins put together. The next sin that we're going to cover over here is a heart that devises wicked plans. And boy, does that cover a multitude of sins. Once again, every day that you turn on the news or you uh, read a paper or whatever it is, you see, oh, well, there was another terrorist plot that was thwarted by information given to the FBI or Interpol or one of the police departments or whatever it is. And certain news outlets will put a spin on it and say, well, yeah, they're, they're, they're not radical. They're just protesting what they feel is unfair treatment or whatever it is. But any time that you devise something that has going to have a negative impact on somebody else, that is devising wicked plans. Um, 
there was, uh, I happened to tune into a TV the other day that I don't even know what station it was on, but um, there were people in there that were uh, making a case for the illegal immigrants that were trying to get here from Honduras or where, wherever it was from. And they said, well, they have the right to seek a better life for themselves. And I don't think there's anybody that would argue the fact that, yes, they have a right to better themselves. But does that right, their right, include the fact that they can trample over other people's rights and violate other people's laws in order to achieve their better life? That to me, when especially when these people are organized, that those are people are devising wicked plans to go against somebody else's beliefs or somebody else's laws. And it's, I, I, I've been told, well, you certainly aren't very sympathetic. You know, how can you call yourself a Christian when you don't feel bad for the plight of these people? And it's one thing to feel sorry for them, but it's another one for them to make excuses for them doing something that is clearly wrong. Um, I, I speak from experience when I know my grandparents came over from Czechoslovakia. And they came through Ellis Island and went through the entire immigration process the way it was supposed to be done. The people today don't think they need to bother to do that. We will flood America with people who are sometimes of less than perfect moral character. We, uh, whether you like President Trump or not, you have to agree with one thing is when you let batches of refugees in here, you don't know what you're bringing in. And there has to be procedures followed. People have to be vetted so that we're not bringing in the cream of the criminal crop from these South American countries. And in a lot of cases, they're not they are coming into the United States through the South American countries from other places that we really know that we don't want them from because they have ill intent for the United States. The fifth one of the sins that are in the Bible, feet that are swift and running to evil. And uh, we just, in our everyday lives, we just see so much of that. So much of the fact that people are, they can't wait to sin. And we see it in our walks of, everyday walk of life, we see it in the recreation that the people do. We see things that uh, 20 years ago would have landed you in jail. Now people want this and consider it to be the norm and that there should be no repercussions about doing it. And these are the people that fall into that fifth category of feet that are swift into running to evil. A uh, few years ago, I saw on the news where there was a near riot, I guess. It was actually a mini stampede at a casino 
when they were giving away some kind of a free gift. Dozens of people were hurt, hundreds of people were arrested. That is an example of people running into evil. And we see it with the other things that people do. Go into the store, shoplift, run out. We see people that just, they can't wait to gossip or they can't wait to spread uh, some kind of a tale about their neighbor or their friend or whatever it is. And these are people who really fall into feet that are swift into running to evil. And the hard part for me to realize was that I was one of those people many years ago. Uh, you know, I thought nothing about doing things which today I wouldn't even consider. But why did I do it? Basically because I didn't know any better. So today the people that are listening, now you should begin to get the inkling that you should know better. The next is a false witness who speaks lies. And that's somebody who um, is basically defiling the reputation of somebody else in an untrue manner. And we see so much of that from people who might not agree with a particular political point of view or may not agree with somebody in a particular way that they address lifestyles. Uh, the other week, the uh, guy that was on TV, I don't even remember what his name was, uh, came out and said that he was brutally attacked uh, by people that quoted ethnic spurs about him, slurs about him, and that uh, because of his uh, pronounced sexuality that uh, these people just didn't like him. And yet the police have come to find out that this story was completely made up. And he had done this in an attempt to put more light and more favor into him as a person. Publicity stuff, in other words. We see this all too often. And we, ha we must be very careful when we hear somebody speak ill of somebody else. We really need to check it out before we assume that everything that is being said is true. And the last one is the one that can have the worst ramifications and uh, for the Christians, and that's one who sows discord among the brethren. And the reason that that is such a horrific thing is where they try to get two people who may not necessarily agree on everything but they try to vet them away from uh, Jesus because they don't like the way they look, the color of their hair, whatever the, whatever the reason is. But these are the people who really and truly um, are causing dissension among the brethren. And by the brethren, I mean the body of Christ. In Galatians, 
uh, 5, 19, and 21, it mentions several more sins to be on the guard against. And it says, Now the deeds of the flesh are evident, which are immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, sorcery, uh, animites, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, dispute, dissensions, fractions, envying, drunkenness, uh, carousing, and things like these of which I forewarn you. Just as I have forewarned you that those who practice these things will not inherit the kingdom of God. As we draw today's lesson to a close, we need to remember one thing. We need to combat within ourselves the practice of any one of these sins. And you do that by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in your life. When you have the Holy Spirit in your life, you will desire to live a life based upon biblical principles. And when you're living that kind of life, nobody can justly speak ill of you. They cannot justly bear witness against you. And many of the sins that we've covered today because these are not just named sins these are examples that have been given in the Bible so as we close today I just want to say that we need to do a lot of self-examination in our lives we need to be aware of the things that we have a tendency to do out of second nature and examine them. Are they truly in line with the way Christ wants us to live? And so, as I close today, I just pray that each and every one of you will just take a couple of minutes and that you will examine the way that you're living your life, that you will examine the things that you think about and don't really research to see is are they in any way part of the seven deadly sins. I want to thank you all for joining us today. May God bless you all and look forward to seeing you next week.